Hey, welcome to Drum Roll. Today I have with me an American musician who has been guest principal harp for the Chicago Symphony Orchestra and the Lyric Opera in Chicago. And then here in Australia, the guest principal harp of Opera Australia Orchestra, as well as the symphony orchestras in Sydney and the states of Tasmania and Victoria. She was a co-founder of the Chicago Harp Quartet and Australian Harp Quartet as well. She's collaborated with Yo-Yo Ma, Renee Fleming, Jonas Kaufman, and Diesel. I'd like to welcome to the show, Emily Granger. Hello, Annabelle. Hello, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Now, let's start off with a little bit of information about Chicago. Why on earth did you choose a harp? It's got to be the hardest thing to get on the train, really. Besides a marimba, but it is quite, quite hard. <laughs> um, but it was the sound of the harp that drew me to it initially. I heard it on CD when I was 10 years old, asked my mom what in the world that instrument was, and she told me it was a harp, and I asked her if I could play it in string orchestra the following year, and she said, I don't see why not, and that was it. <laughs> so I had oh. no idea what I was going to jump into, but here we are, it's been 20 years. <laughs> and she had no idea she'd have to fit it in her car to take you everywhere, is that right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Great about trying to move the harp around the two of us and oh anyway it, it gets easier <laughs> it does, I'm sure you get better at it as you go along and what is it that brought you from Chicago out to Australia so interestingly enough I was invited by Alicia Crossley who was a Kruger fine music uh, scholar and she brought me to Australia for a six-week tour and um, was able to commission new works for harp and recorder by yeah. Australian composers, as well as um, playing some traditional repertoire as well. Uh, or I guess maybe untraditional because it is harp and recorder, but traditional repertoire of other instruments that we stole and arranged for ourselves. And that was five years ago. And um, here I am living in Australia now. I'm one of those composers and I really hit it off and uh, we're getting married next year. Yay! So I, I'm <laughs> be with him and pursue a, a career in this beautiful country and this amazing city. Did you meet Alicia over in America? I did, yeah. So yeah. Alicia came and visited me um, in Chicago through another mutual friend um, that I had studied with at university. And we really hit it off, um, both playing like these ancient instruments, but also being really intrigued by new music and the possibilities that our instruments can do and what we could do together. And the Kruger Scholarship was the absolute like perfect opportunity for us to be able to actually make that collaboration happen. Right, right. And of course, we're not just talking about the little recorders that people are familiar with at school. She's got a wide range of different ones, hasn't she? She does. She's got a lot of recorders, yes. So now that you're out here, and of course, this year has been such a strange one, what was most impacted when COVID happened for you? <laughs> My entire schedule. <laughs> I know. Um, it, it was initially it was awful um, and it was it was a lot to handle and uh, I really feel like I had to mourn the loss of, of this career that I had been working um, over the last three years to build here in Australia and I was really excited about a lot of projects but like anything like there's always you know a silver lining and the silver lining is that I have been wanting to really focus on my solo playing and work on solo repertoire. And as a freelance harpist, I never have time to do anything for myself. I'm frantically like moving my harp around and playing multiple programs every week with never enough time. And so now I'm actually like able to focus on this solo program. And if COVID hadn't happened, honestly, there was no way that I would have been able to do any of this. Mm. So what has it developed further uh, during this quiet time? So I'm going to record a CD. Uh -huh. So that's where I'm at with all of it. Yeah. And I would have never really been able to do that if I hadn't had this time. So you've got a concert coming up that's very close, very soon. So I'm going to get this video up as quick as I can for you. And you're doing that with Alicia as well. Yep. It's yeah. our five year anniversary of our, uh, of our project Duality. But yeah. The music that you're going to be using for this concert coming out, how did you choose the music? So we really wanted to focus on Australian repertoire, which I feel like I'm 
kind of doing a lot. Like I'm here and I wasn't exposed to it really in the States at all. So we're going to play one of the pieces we commissioned by my fiance, Tristan Coelho. It's called Tree Tops, Rooftops. And that was inspired by um, when he was living in Merrickville and looking out over all the trees and hearing the birds and there's a little owl that hoots in there as well. So it's, pretty, <laughs> it's, a, it's very quirky. There's a lot of extended techniques on both the harp and recorder. <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit silly, but it's really nice. And a beautiful work by Anne Boyd, Goldfish Through Summer Rain, that was originally for piano actually. And then Marshall McGuire, the uh, famous harpist, transcribed for harp and flute. And we've furthered that with, uh, you know, harp and recorder. Mm -hmm. So it's all modern music that you've got going? No, actually. So those two pieces we've paired with two quite traditional works, one by Gabrielle Fauré, Sicilian, and also a CPE Bach. Uh, flute Sonata, which is one of my favorite works to perform. I did the transcription myself back when I was a master student, actually, and um, have been playing it ever since. And it's just, it just keeps growing on me. And I uh, am really looking forward to playing it with Alicia because I feel like she really comes to uh, her element when playing Baroque music as well. Oh, brilliant. So the transcriptions that you're doing, which are the instruments that are easiest to transcribe to harp? I would say the easiest instruments to transcribe for harp is obviously piano, but it's, it's, it's difficult because the harp is very different from the piano and what works on the piano doesn't necessarily work on the harp. And so it does take a lot of, of imagination and moving things around and figuring out what's going to work best, but it's quite, quite fun. Mm. And you're going to be working in a beautiful church. So the St. James in Sydney, in the center of Sydney is a very old church with amazing high ceilings and extraordinary acoustics. Absolutely. It's been, well, it's been six months since I've performed in a hall. <laughs> I did a little house concert uh, here in my little studio, but um, this is going to be my first big concert in a hall again. And it's going to be absolutely gorgeous being able to play in St. James. Yes. Yes. And letting the sound just float up into the, into the eaves. You've actually got a live audience as well as a live stream audience, haven't you? Yes, both, which is pretty cool. I don't know how often this is happening elsewhere, but yeah, to have both, I think is going to be really exciting. Yeah, I think they're just, they'll probably be really spread out. I think I've only been to one concert so far and uh, yeah. everybody was so spread out that um, before the people came on, I, I turned around and said, you know, you've got to clap really loud. <laughs> But it still sounds quite empty, so hopefully it will fill out, fill out the hall. And people at home, you can clap as loud as you want. That's the best thing to do. Okay, so the tickets are just ten Australian dollars. That's like enough for a Mars bar in America. <laughs> it's it's a really uh, economical, uh, but perfect, a small but perfectly formed concert. And uh, at an economical price, $10 a ticket in Australian dollars. And you can get them at this link. I will also put it down below in the description. And it's going to be on Wednesday, 16th of September at 1.15 p.m. And I'll also give you some of the other time zones down in the description below so that you can uh, figure out easily where it fits in with you and where you are in the world. And if you want to know a little bit more about Emily, you can go to her website, which is emilygranger.com. And she can give you any quotes if you want to do other concerts or if you've got any other ideas for her or keep in touch with her if you want to see that album. So are any of these songs going to go on to the album that you're going to be doing at the concert? This one, There's the, the whole album is solo harp, but uh, I think this is definitely something Alicia and I need to look into. <laughs> I think so. That would be a nice way to finish your fifth, fifth anniversary, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining me today, Emily. Oh, thanks for having me, Annabelle.